we all want a bit of chaos in our infrastructure, right? Well, maybe not, but Azure Chaos Studio is something that can be quite useful because when you're building apps and their surrounding infrastructure, you would typically build them to be resilient, right? And how do you know that that resiliency actually works? Well, most of the time you try to take great care in designing your uh, infrastructure uh, architecture around your app with as much redundancy and resiliency as you can within your budget, of course. And then maybe you do carefully constructed disaster recovery type testing once a year. Tests that are designed to test the specific resiliency bits that you have in your design, like taking down one VM and seeing if its partner is able to function properly. Well, those tests can at a time maybe unveil some issues that you have in your infrastructure, but most of the time they provide a little more than just a check mark in a user acceptance test or even worse, just a false sense of security. Now, chaos engineering is a way to test a system's resiliency by injecting faults and then learning how the system reacts in the hopes of discovering points that need improvement. So to put it short, you introduce a bit of chaos and then make a note of what happens. So how does Azure Chaos Studio fit into this, you may ask? Well, let's dive in, shall we? Now, arguably, you could all taking down that VM in my aforementioned example for chaos engineering because you do introduce a bit of chaos, right? Well, yeah, but chaos engineering is a bit more than just designing a system to withstand certain things and then testing those specific things. So chaos engineering is different than testing. Testing is a more reactive process where your goal is to verify that things work as expected. Chaos engineering, on the other hand, is a more proactive process where your goal is to find potential points of failure before they end up actually causing issues. And the, the principles of chaos engineering usually involves four steps. Plan, experiment, analyze, mitigate, like and subscribe. Huh, I guess that's five. Oh, well, these steps, of course, assume that you have a pretty good grasp of uh, how your system works and performs under normal conditions, your baseline. The first order of business then is to put a plan together. Usually this would mean uh, creating a hypothesis. Uh, what could go wrong in our system and how should it react? A simple example here could be if uh, process A on server A quits unexpectedly, the system should still be available as long as the same process on server B is running smoothly. And then when you have your hypothesis, you design and run an experiment to test it in a controlled manner, preferably, so that you contain the, the blast radius of your little experiment. Uh, for example, purposely, purposely going ahead and actually uh, terminating process A on server B, gathering your data and then restoring the system to its former state, aka starting process A on server A back up. And after running your experiment, you hopefully have a bunch of data that you can analyze. Perhaps you find that uh, while process A did function as intended on server B, maybe process B struggled under the increased load on server B, making the, the system as a whole not function as intended. So now you have identified a potential failure point and you can focus on mitigating that. And it's also worth noting that chaos engineering is not a short term thing that you do a couple of time, times. It should be an ever ongoing pra practice. So you repeat the cycle again and again and again, because trust me, you'll never run out of potential failure points. And that is uh, chaos engineering at its core principles. And there are multiple tools out there to aid you in this. The, the first one to really gain any fame uh, I guess it was Netflix's Chaos Monkey, which they created and used internally before making it, up, making it open source back in 2012. But we're here to talk about Azure, so let us take a look at what Azure Chaos Studio can do in helping you do your chaos engineering. And first of all, chaos engineering is not about a tool. 
I mentioned that uh, chaos engineering should be an ongoing process and tools can really help with parts of that process. But like with concepts like DevOps, it's not about purchasing a single product or employing someone and giving them a title like DevOps engineer or chaos engineering. It's a mindset, it's a culture thing. Nevertheless, Azure Chaos Studio is a really good tool to use when running your experiments. It is also mentioned in the well-architected framework from Microsoft alongside chaos engineering in the uh, recommendations around testing. But if you're now thinking, why do I need a tool to terminate a process? Uh, well, <laughs> Chaos Studio can do a whole lot more than just terminating a process. It can, of course, terminate a process if that's all you want, but it can also apply pressure like uh, CPU, memory, disk spikes, uh, add network latency, DNS failures, changes in NSG rules, change the time, fail over Cosmos DB, stop app services, including Azure Functions. And it can do all sorts of things in AKS. The, the list goes on uh, for a bit more and is ever expanding. But let us back up a bit and take it from the start. So Azure Chaos Studio is a service and it's designed to help you run experiments. That is kind of the scope for it, to run experiments. But before you start creating experiments, you need to have some targets for those experiments. And within Chaos Studio, you will have two different types of targets. You have agent-based and you have service direct targets. Agent-based targets, they, well, they require you to you guessed it, install an agent. And <clears throat> this applies to virtual machines or virtual machine scale sets, and only those two. You can also enable virtual machines or virtual machine scale sets as service direct targets, but having them as only service direct targets will severely limit your options when it comes to actions or faults. You can perform on them and on, uh, on them in experiments. More on that later on. Now, <clears throat> Service direct targets are targets where um, Chaos Studio can influence the targets by simply manipulating the, the service itself through Azure. An example of that would be NSGs or AKS. Some resources can also be enabled both as a service direct target and agent-based targets if you want to. For example, your Azure VMs. So that's targets. Then you have actions. In your experiments, you have two kinds of actions you can take false and delay. The latter one is, yeah, just an actual delay. But false, on the other hand, is a bit more exciting because this is uh, kind of where the fun starts in Azure Studio. I mentioned a bunch of them early on and the list is actually too long for me to cover here in its entirety. So uh, there's a link down in the description if you want to check that out. But uh, faults usually do one out of four things. They add latency, apply pressure, change configurations, or they are destructive. Latency can, for example, be network latency. And in that case, you define how much latency you want to introduce and filters for what traffic you want the latency to apply to, which is nice because you can then, as I mentioned earlier, um, contain the blast radius of your experiment and still be able to, for example, access the VM yourself during those experiments. Pressure, in this sense, is pretty much the same as load. For example, disk I.O. pressure adds artificial pressure on the disks you select as your target. And experiments, <clears throat> an experiment of this kind of fault can give you some answers in what happens when you reach the limits on your disks when it comes to IOPS or throughput. And based on the results, you can see if you should consider upgrading your disks to disks with higher performance. Uh, change of configurations could be a change in a network security group. For example, adding an NSG rule that blocks certain ports to or from certain IP addresses. Um, or it could be changing the status of a certificate in Key Vault. Uh, for example, disabling a certificate. And lastly, being destructive. This applies to the example of terminating a process or stopping a service, stopping an app service uh, or Azure function and so on. Things that really break stuff in a pretty harsh way. So now that you know all about the targets and actions and faults, you are ready to start creating your experiments on your own. And experiments can have multiple steps with multiple branches, each with their own multiple actions. So you can really create 
uh, really elaborate experiments here, uh, or you can create a simple one with just a single step, single branch, single action. Probably better to start small, I guess, and then work your way up to more advanced um, experiments later on. But you might be asking, or I hope you're at least wondering, how will Azure Chaos Studio have the necessary permissions to perform these actions? Well, for agent-based targets, it's that easy, as easy as the agent is running as local admin or equivalent. But for service direct targets, those that manipulate the Azure services themselves, you can choose to bring your own user assigned managed identity that you handle the permissions for yourself. Or more easily, you can let Azure Chaos Studio handle the permissions. By opting for this one, the experiments you create will have their own system assigned, assigned identity and you can let Azure Chaos Studio create custom roles that give that identity just the permissions uh, that it needs to perform that experiment and um, the resources it needs it to, and nothing more. Pretty sweet. But to run this all off, there are, of course, limitations, issues, and annoyances with Azure Chaos Studio, as with most services. The first one I really noticed is that your experiments need to reside within the same resource group as their targets. This might not sound like a biggie, but it does prevent you from running experiments across resource groups, for example. But then again, you should uh, contain the blast radius, so it might not be an issue for you. And next one is region availability. Now, uh, Azure Chaos Studio itself is GA and unavailable in a lot of regions, but not all. And if the resources you want to target is in a region where Chaos Studio is not available, then tough luck. You also cannot move experiments using resource moved. You would have to recreate them if you have a need for moving them around, for example, to other regions or other resource groups. And recreating them is something you can do with Bicep, for example. It's fast and cool. It's not too difficult either. Check out my video here if you want to learn more about getting started from absolute scratch and then end up deploying your first resource in Azure through the, the magic of code. Also, Check out the resources down in the description. Let me know if the, in the comments if there are anything else you want me to cover around Chaos Studio or anything else. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, cheers.